Have you ever asked yourself if what we call reality is actually real? It might sound like a philosophical question, the kind of thing a Greek philosopher might have pondered centuries ago, but believe it or not, modern science is showing us that the universe could be far stranger than we imagine. What your eyes see, what your hands touch, may not exist in the way you think it does. And that's not speculation, it's physics. Today, we're diving into one of the greatest intellectual shocks in history, the proof that the universe is not locally real. And get ready, because what comes next is going to turn your mind upside down. To understand the weight of this discovery, we need to start with the basics. What exactly is this thing called local realism? It may sound complicated, but it's not. Let's break it into two parts. First, there's realism. This simple idea says that things exist with well-defined properties, whether someone is looking at them or not. An apple stays red, round, and sweet even if no one opens the fridge. The moon keeps shining in the sky, even when you're not staring at it. Sounds obvious, right? After all, it would be kind of weird to think things just vanish the moment we look away. Then comes locality. This principle comes straight from Einstein's theory of relativity. It tells us that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. If you turn on a flashlight here, its beam can't suddenly and instantly affect a star on the other side of the galaxy. There's a built-in speed limit to the universe, and no one gets to break it. Put these two principles together, realism and locality and you get what once felt like common sense in science. A logical, predictable, almost machine-like universe, ticking along with order and precision. But then quantum mechanics showed up, and flipped the table completely. Now picture this, two magical coins are tossed, one in New York and the other in Tokyo. Somehow, every single time, if one lands on heads, the other also lands on heads. If one lands on tails, the other follows suit. Always the same result, as if they were linked by an invisible thread. Sounds impossible, right? Well, that's exactly what happens in the quantum world with the phenomenon known as entanglement. When two particles become entangled, they share a common state, like twins bound by a secret connection. Distance doesn't matter, it could be meters, kilometers, or even light years apart. If one chooses a property, the other instantly aligns with it. Imagine two people opening mystery boxes on opposite sides of the planet and, without fail, finding the exact same object inside. That's entanglement in action. Einstein was so bothered by this idea that he called it, spooky action at a distance. To him, it sounded more like magic than science. He firmly believed there had to be some hidden explanation, some secret variable we hadn't discovered yet, something that made the particles look magical but still obey ordinary rules. The paradox is that the more scientists tested it, the clearer it became that the universe wasn't following our comfortable, classical rules. It was as if reality itself were playing a trick on us, showing that our common sense intuition might be nothing more than a cozy illusion. It was in this confusing scenario that, in 1964, physicist John Bell stepped in. He looked at all the philosophical back and forth and said, all right, let's stop arguing and put nature to the test. Bell created a mathematical way to decide who was right, those who believed in local realism, like Einstein, or those who embraced the bizarre predictions of quantum mechanics. He came up with what we now call Bell's inequalities. Think of them as a set of boundaries. If the world were classical, predictable, and guided by hidden variables, the results of experiments should always fall within those boundaries. But if quantum mechanics were right, the results could break out of them. It's like designing a cheat detector for reality itself. 
If nature stayed within Bell's rules, Einstein's vision would hold. But if nature broke the rules, then we'd have to accept that the universe is far stranger than we ever imagined. In practice, Bell turned a philosophical argument into something measurable. He brought in numbers, probabilities, and a tool that could decide, once and for all, which view of the universe was closer to the truth. It was no longer about speculation, it was about evidence. Jump ahead to 1982. French physicist Alain Aspect decided to put Bell's theorem to the test. He and his team built a complex experimental setup using lasers and entangled photons. The idea sounded simple on paper but was incredibly challenging in practice, create pairs of light particles and measure how they behaved when observed from different angles. The results? Clear as day. Bell's inequalities were violated, not just once, but over and over again. That meant nature wasn't obeying local realism. The universe was cheating, at least according to our classical expectations. The scientific community was stunned. This wasn't just a technical detail, it was proof that Einstein, the genius who had already reshaped physics with relativity, was wrong on this particular issue. The foundation of local realism, something that had seemed so solid, simply couldn't survive in the face of these results. And as if that weren't enough, researchers around the world spent the following decades refining these experiments. They improved accuracy, closed potential loopholes, and reached the same conclusion again and again. The more we tested, the more the universe seemed to laugh at our stubborn need to believe it should behave normally. Then, in 2022, came the ultimate recognition. The Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Alain Aspect, John Clauser, and Anton Zeelinger. Each of them, at different moments, helped turn Bell's inequalities from a theoretical idea into one of the strongest foundations of modern physics. Clauser was the pioneer back in the 1970s, carrying out the first real experimental tests. Aspect refined those methods in the 1980s and delivered results that couldn't be ignored. And Zeelinger pushed things even further, exploring the modern applications of entanglement, such as transmitting quantum information across long distances. What makes this so remarkable is that it didn't stay in the ivory tower of academia. These discoveries opened the door to technologies that sound like science fiction. Quantum computing, which promises machines capable of solving problems today's computers will never touch. Quantum cryptography, which could create communication systems that are virtually unhackable. So we're not just talking about scientific curiosity. These breakthroughs are actively shaping the future, the way we communicate, the way we process information, and maybe even the way we think about what knowledge really means in a digital world. But maybe the most thought-provoking part of all this isn't about technology, it's about philosophy. If the universe is not locally real, what does that really mean for us? Does reality exist on its own, or does it only show up when we interact with it? Some scientists support the Copenhagen interpretation, which suggests that reality collapses only when it's observed. Others lean toward the many worlds theory, where every single measurement splits reality into countless parallel universes. And there are those who see reality as a kind of information code, as if the universe is less like a stone and more like a cosmic computer. Either way, the message is clear, the universe isn't the solid, predictable stage we once thought it was. It's flexible, mysterious, and profoundly counterintuitive. Each new discovery opens fresh doors, reminding us that what we call reality may be just the surface layer of something much deeper, something waiting to be uncovered. And here's the big question, if the universe isn't real in the way we once believed, could it be our consciousness that brings the stage to life? Before we wrap this up, let's take a quick look at the future. The experiments that once started as deep philosophical debates are now shaping entire industries. 
Today, there are already Chinese satellites using quantum communication to transmit information in ways that are virtually impossible to intercept. Tech giants like Google and IBM are racing to build the first large-scale, fully functional quantum computers. And here's the fascinating part, all of this began with a simple question, is the universe locally real? What seemed like a purely theoretical dilemma has opened the door to discoveries that could revolutionize medicine, digital security, transportation, and even the way we explore outer space. It's almost poetic when you think about it. The biggest technological revolutions often spring from the most uncomfortable questions. And in this case, a challenge to the very fabric of reality has turned into a roadmap for some of the most advanced tools humanity has ever dreamed of. So, what do you think about all this? Does the universe exist on its own, or does it only come alive when we interact with it? Are we just spectators, or active participants in creating reality itself? If even geniuses like Einstein were unsettled by these questions, maybe that's where the true beauty lies, living in a universe that insists on surprising us. Share your thoughts down in the comments, I'd love to know how you interpret this cosmic riddle. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and join me as we explore the kinds of questions that really shake our minds. Because in the end, maybe the greatest mystery isn't out there among the stars, but inside the way we see the world.